Today's story is a very well-known missing 411 case, and what makes this case so interesting is that the events that were reported by the woman it happened to have a lot of people believing that those events were tied to feral people. But before we get into that, welcome back to Dark Wilderness. If you've had an experience or an encounter with anything that you would like to have shared on the show, please email me at the link below. You can join us on Facebook as well, there's a link below for that. And if you like today's story, please gently slap that like button. And the next time you're going down the Appalachian Trail and you have to run off down the mountain, if you throw all your gear on the ground, don't forget to hold on to that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. Now, let's get into today's encounter. In 1989, Eloise Lindsay was a 22-year-old recent college graduate, and just like a lot of college graduates, she really wasn't too sure what she wanted to do with the rest of her life, and she really just needed some form of an escape just to decompress, collect herself, and figure out how to move forward. So she came up with the idea that she would go hike a 43.3-mile section of the Appalachian Trail through the Table Rock State Park in South Carolina. She told her parents that her plan was to hike a 7-day solo hike, meet up with a friend of hers, and then her and her friend would finish the rest of the hike together. Now, a lot of parents would be really concerned with their daughter going off into the wilderness, but not Eloise's. She was a very avid backpacker, and they were very confident in her skills and abilities, and they were certain that she would be fine on a trip like this. On November 4th, she set off to the trail. When she got there, she grabbed all of her gear, and she started off on the solo portion of her hike. The first day went absolutely great. She was really enjoying herself. She was taking in the scenery and she really felt like this was what she needed. And that night she set up camp just off the trail. The next morning she woke up, had a quick breakfast, packed up her gear and then she started down the trail again. The second day, just like the first, was absolutely great. That night she moved off the trail, set up camp again and everything was fine. However, that was quickly about to change. The next morning she woke up and she had this really deep feeling of dread. She just felt like something was wrong and she just could not put her finger on it. She kind of sat in the tent for a few minutes, got out, and she was really feeling on edge. So she quickly started to pack up her tent and all of her gear and she happened to look off into the trees and standing 10 yards away, there was a man standing right beside this tree. She was a little bit taken back for a second so she looked away, looked back, and this person was gone. At this point, Eloise was feeling really nervous. Like it wasn't uncommon to run into other hikers along the trail, but it was really weird that this man did not acknowledge her presence at all. He didn't call out to her, he didn't wave. And that made her feel just very on edge and very vulnerable being a 22 year old woman off in the middle of nowhere. And there was this man standing 10 yards away and he just did not communicate with her at all. Eloise at this point gathered up all of her stuff and she made her way back to the trail. Once she was on the trail, she started heading in the direction that she needed to go, but she just could not shake the feeling that she was being watched and that feeling quickly turned into the same feeling she had when she woke up that morning in the tent. At this point, she started to pick up the pace, she started to run, and she was really conflicted with what she wanted to do because if she continued down the trail to where she was going to meet with her friend, she would most likely have to spend another night, possibly two, on the trail and she did not want to do that after experiencing what she just had with that strange man kind of hiding behind that tree. So she was left with another option of trying to make her way down the mountain. Now Eloise was fairly confident that down the mountain there was a road and she thought that it would be a lot quicker to head down there than it would be to head to that rendezvous point. So at this point she turned off the trail and she started heading down the mountain. As she made her way down the mountain to the real thick bush, she was periodically hearing these really heavy footprints all around her as well as this really deep male voice. And every time Eloise would turn around to look at the direction where those noises were coming from, she wouldn't see anything. And that night, as it started to get dark, she knew she was going to have to spend the night in the middle of nowhere on the side of this mountain. So she set up her tent got inside and all night she could hear those heavy footprints and that deep male voice circling around the area where she had set up her camp. For the next several days, these events just kept repeating. She would get up in the morning, start heading down the mountain. At night, she would hear those heavy footsteps all around her tent. She would hear that male voice. 
And this carried on all the way up until that seventh day when she was supposed to meet up with her friend. Her friend was waiting for her, she did not show up, so her friend decided she would wait just a little bit longer. After a few more hours, her friend realized that something's wrong, Eloise should have been here by now, and then she went to the authorities and reported it to the police. The police then launched an absolutely massive search effort to look for Eloise. For 14 days, they had a massive search party combing the entire area that Eloise should have been in along that trail. They had helicopters in the air, but they could not find any sign of her. And after 14 days, they ended up having to say that they had to call the search off because they found no sign of her at all. Meanwhile, while the search party was looking for her, Eloise kept having all those things happening to her day in and day out. She was being followed and chased through the bush. She would hear those heavy footprints, hear that voice. And at one point, this person was so close behind her that she just decided to just full on run. She ended up dropping her pack with everything in it that she would really need to stay alive. She had water in there, a tiny little bit of food. But she just dropped it to make herself not be carrying so much weight. And she just ran as fast as she could down through the rest of this mountain. At this point, it had been 20 days since Eloise started off on her hike. And it had been 17 days of dealing with being chased by whoever this was. Eloise at this point was absolutely starving. And she just happened to come across a box that was shoved in between a tree that had donuts and pound cake in it. So being completely starving, she took this box, she consumed the donuts, consumed the pound cake. And a couple of days later, she was sitting up against a tree, just absolutely out of energy, completely exhausted, dehydrated, malnourished. And this hunter that was just in the, randomly in the middle of nowhere spotted her sitting up against this tree. Eloise at first thought that this hunter was the person that had been chasing her for the past, at this point, 20 days. And she really wanted nothing to do with him. But eventually she kind of realized that this hunter wanted to help her. And this hunter was not the one that had been chasing her down the mountain through the bush. So the hunter ended up helping Eloise get out of the woods. She ended up going to the hospital. And she was really in fairly decent health. She was just incredibly dehydrated, very malnourished. Now she reported all these events. She has done several interviews on it. And a lot of people, as I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of people think that this person that was chasing Eloise down the mountain, kind of harassing her at night, was a feral person or a wild man, as the people in Appalachia call them. There have been a lot of other people that have experienced very similar events when dealing with these feral people along the Appalachian Trail and as well as the Pacific Coast Trail. Maybe not to the same extreme as Eloise, where she was chased through the wilderness for 20 days by this person or these people. It really goes to show her determination to survive. It also makes you really ask a lot of questions like, who are these people? Why are they always harassing hikers? And what do they want? Now, nobody's really ever going to know exactly what Eloise went through except for Eloise. But I really want to know your thoughts on this. If you think that this was feral people chasing her through the bush or if this might have been something else. Well, that's it for today's story. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. I do reply to every single comment and I do appreciate them all. Even the snarky ones I've got a couple times there. Maybe those ones not so much, but I do reply to every single comment. So... Again, thanks for joining us, and the next time you're headed down the Appalachian Trail and you have to run off the side of the mountain, throw all your gear on the ground, don't forget to grab that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.